try to talk about a very peculiar situation in music history. It's uh, the second last composition Schumann has written after Gesänge der Frühe, after the violin concerto, after the concert piece in the line for piano, after the fantasy for violin, five, probably five romances for cello and piano. They had been played only at private concerts, probably three or four times by Cellist Christian Reiners and Clara Schumann. And once it was a lecture where Joachim played on violin. And there Schumann had a nervous breakdown when he heard the piece. And this means that this piece had a heavy historic load. <laughs> And uh, when you read all the work lists, you can read five romances, November 3 to 5, uh, 1804, 53, lost. But when you read the, uh, the a biography of Brahms, he says a few days ago, Clara Schumann, it was at, in the last days of Sch Clara's life in, 19, in 1893, has burned a book of cello pieces because she wanted to prevent that those this will be publicly yeah, acceptable. I have the greatest uh, respect of this uh, action. And probably Brahms, who was a Tyro man, he, he burned all his first sketches, all his, he wanted to efface all his traces. And behind his beard, he had a lot to, yeah. Yeah, not to, unravel, to, to hide, I think. And it's also a beard, and when you hear the voice of his, his own voice on the recording, this is the Schneider von Bock and the Hartes Bounds. This was his picture of, of speaking, yeah. And he has always very heavy bass writing, orchestra and piano. Uh, and then I. I was really completely shocked. For me, it was a sort of a similar thing like in India when a man dies, they burn the widow with him. Or, or Hitler cast the whole generation of Czech composers. And it's a little bit this way, it's, it's a murder. Fact, I think. But Clara Schumann can be excused because she, she had an arthritis, she was nearly uh, deaf, she had a fantastic loud tinnitus in the head and suffered headaches, terrible headaches and depressions and probably in, a, in an excess of this depression she was but there are still more traces. Reimers, who was also extremely gifted uh, painter and caricaturist, he went to London and there he was also active as cellist. And then there is a letter by Reimers to Clara Schumann. 20 years after the, uh, the composition uh, to Clara, I'm so glad that you will come to 
perform in London, and I hope to meet you, and I still cherish as the most uh, precious uh, present the uh, manuscript of the cello pieces you then so much loved, and I still love very much. And I, if you don't have the manuscript, I could lend it to you for two or three days, but then I have to have it back. I cannot uh, yeah, not be without this, this manuscript. And apparently Reimers was very short of money and in a bad shape. Also, he had sort of arthritis and uh, he didn't play. He was mainly drawing. and. Uh, it might be that he sold the manuscript to Clara. But it might be also that there was a second manuscript. This is one trace. And then in Endenich, when Brahms first visited Schumann, Schumann entered in March 54, and Brahms visited the very first time. He was the first musician to visit Schumann in November 10. He had no music paper, nothing, no contact, nothing. Uh, and Brahms came with a little list of questions he had to, to ask Schumann. Yeah, Schum uh, Clara has written those questions and very officially went from one question to the other. Then Schumann said, by the way, I very much wanted to present the cello pieces, I don't remember if they, the titles, romances or fantasy pieces, to Simrock, the, the publisher who lived five minutes walk from Endenich. Yeah. Uh, could you please ask my copist, Fuchs, who, who has written everything for, for Schumann, to copy those romances and to bring me the copy that I can present it to? Uh, I still remember yeah, the trio in A major with very, very mysterious basis, but I still remember that it sounded much better with violin than with cello. And then uh, Brahms, who first has written a lecture to Schumann together with Joachim when they performed the pieces, uh, he said, this is heavenly, beautiful music, and uh, this uh, movement with trills, this movement with those mystical basses, we, we couldn't get enough of it, and we had to play it on and on and on when they read it. Both that's really, that's really beautiful. Then this piece disappeared, and when at this, this time you entered, even when you entered on free will, a psychiatric clinic, you had been impregnated. The, the kind sign of kind on your front. Yeah. And uh, then uh, it, one doesn't hear anything about those romances except in 30 years later, the letter of Reimers. And then Reimers couldn't get along with his life and he emigrated to his uncle who was architect in Australia. And he went to Australia and one hoped probably there would be a copy or he had played it. But Stephen Isseglis went through all the newspapers of the, this period and he couldn't find a single program where writers performed those romances. And what's much worse, 
Reims kept after one year, he returned back to England by ship and on the, in the region of the Red Sea, he had a heart attack and died on the ship. And then they just buried yeah, the dead with his all belongings in the Dead Sea. And if there is still a copy, it will be on the bottom of the Dead Sea. <laughs> <laughs> and for 15 years I was nearly obsessed with this idea to write the sort of piece ima imagining how it could sound turned into ashes when there is only the ash of it is called this is a little bit the result you have in the title a romance by Francis Sandre Ashes. And if you read also, you see END end. And this is the same in Ende nicht. Enden ich. It's a place where where Schumann was, was imprisoned for two years. Uh, I'm at the end I'm finishing. And then this is a sort of starting point for, for, the, for the piece. And it's, it could be a sort of a cycle like, like uh, Yeah, like even the drama with the prologue and the epilogue and then single character pieces as they have been in Schumann's time. The prologue and the epilogue is in fact not composed, it is a, a numerological composition using you see here the piano uh, has the C, this is the name of Clara, or then you turn the, yeah, the notes, in, uh, the letters into notes, Chiara, this gives the beginning of the piano concerto C, the great ones on the piano. Yeah. yeah, the main theme of the first movement. Uh, I think. Then 
And I, not the cello, the, the, I'm sorry, the, the cello does it all uh, with the fingertip on the string. And then the piano starts with the note of Schumann, the S. Schumann has written most of the time, you see it in those things, in E flat minor when he talked about himself. And this is the metronome 46, it's the age Schumann reached only 46. And uh, the rhythm again is the verse 8, 8 of June 1810. And now those are too hard, like too hard beats going in the pen each other and with this uh, uh, the cello plays a sort of really dream music which is rhythmically much freer only on the harmonics it's not with any gravitation it's music which is just as a dream in, in your head, but it's not real. And the piano colors those E flats by going along the string and playing also the natural harmonics of the E flat. So you have the whole range of harmonics of Schumann and the piano, you have the whole range of of uh, cello harmonics on, of Clara. Can you once play this? Or first show the, the sound. And the piano. Yeah? Okay. Uh, it's also when you listen there to the recording, there are already three CDs available of the piece. You very often, even with very good ears, you can, can't tell which instrument plays and what. The instruments are like uh, melted in each other. It's a mute and uh, very often the piano plays sounds what the cello could do with the, only the fingertips or, and so on, and with the harmonics also. And for me, it's always uh, very important to, to have a transcendency of, of the of an instrument, that an instrument does not remain instrument, but, but becomes music, <laughs> yeah. and that you forget about the instrument. Also, and this is a piece before the piece starts, the prologue. It will be an epilogue, and there you have another note, the B from Brahms. And this is then the trio, and all three death dates of all three persons are there. there. It's a, and it's called a conduct. It's a funeral cortege. You have this title in the fifth smaller symphony. Okay, then. Can you once play it? If 
you can get uh, a position where you get more uh, lascia vibrare. Sometimes I think to the other. Yeah, you have to like a guitar player. You have to find it. Yeah. I think it's better just to. Very nice, but uh, don't be obsessed with the metronome mark. It's symbolic, yeah, this metronome, like a Berg chamber concerto. Mm -hmm. I feel it's too much in a straight jacket now, the whole piece. And the harmonics should never give the impression of being measured, that they fly very freely mm -hmm. and, and try to make really beautiful melodies out of the thing. And, uh, yeah, in print you can't guess so much the distance, but the distance is always different. Mm -hmm. And you hear that we have a lot of now uh, micro intervals from the upper tone, yeah, the seventh in the cello, which is very seldom used, and uh, also in the piano. But you, we have a sort of C9, C9 uh, impression at the beginning, but then it, it goes away. And at the end, the piano plays suddenly a very low note, plays the B flat. No, a north note. Yeah, the other B flat, the Brahms. Yeah. Suddenly, Brahms is already here. Yeah. And uh, this is symbolic here. 
the second last line in the middle. Can we try another one? And they always try to connect every harmonic without sliding, and it's not written. Yes. But uh, okay. the, it should be absolutely no, no, uh, no idea of technique or thing. It should be something which, which is here, and mm -hmm. it's not played, in fact. Can you think it's a medium who plays for you there? So somebody who's 200 years dead already. <laughs> Yeah, you have to, to judge with your ear. <laughs> okay, let's just, and the beginning also, yeah, she got very old, 77, but it's, uh, it's not that, not intentional, I don't think. Don't do anything, just let it, let it do. It's not, but more exact than our long three but very precise. <laughs> I don't mean to short it, no, it's not so I don't just in the echo key. It's very nice. Probably, can you 
play on the bridge try to imitate the breathing really. A little bit accent stuff. Yeah. In. <laughs> now you you do it very soft, yeah, yeah. It's only the cello. Good, yeah. And now uh, all the <coughs> the titles are all taken from uh, early texts of Schumann. Aurora Nacht. And then now this piece has a it's the longest of those little pieces. It starts also first with the harmonics of those two notes which are in the prologue and then the cello naturally starts with Schumann's note and then CH could be Schumann or already Chiara CH from Chiara yeah. <coughs> and then uh, now uh, there are a lot of uh, Sorcetti Cavati, probably the most famous one is in, in 15, the first notes of the cello. And the next page. You don't have measures here in this edition. No, 15 <coughs> is the page. I'm sorry, if I even. Yeah. yeah, it's the F A. Yeah. of the romances we played yesterday, but it, uh, it's also the, the notes of the, of the FIA Sonata common piece they started to write with Dietrich Schumann and uh, Joachim, but uh, finally Schumann finished the whole sonata, a third sonata. Then we have, uh, for instance, uh, like sort of on page 16, like uh, sort of uh, little motifs like bird songs, and those have all the names of Ernestine von Frick, of Chiara. Also, some of the sisters of Schumacher, yeah, yeah, and so, so on. It's all our names of Schumann's life. And then we come in seventeen to the the piano here on the bottom line. You see it plays. Yeah, no, in uh, seventeen the E flat minor. The choral, yeah. Without the stopping, just play it normally. And it has a very strange connection. The original is in C sharp minor from Etude Symphonique, the theme. And this theme's theme is out of a flute concerto of the father of Ernestine von Frick, a rich officer, an amateur composer, and Schumann went through the piece 
and then to Honoring use the theme in Etude Symphony. But when Schumann got the news that Ernestine Frick, von Frickel was only a natural daughter of his, she is not entitled to inherit yeah, all the money, uh, Schumann broke this engagement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now this theme comes back in 49, in 1849, when he has written Manfred. And in Manfred, yeah, Manfred wants to, to get back his dead sister Astarte out of the world of the spirits and, and goes to the mountains, the Swiss Jungfrau, and asks there. Ariman to open to the heaven and the dust after him, but he never can, can reach her. And finally, he, he dies out of his own will and refuses every, every prayers of, of clergymen. He says, that When I die, I die out of my own will. Then, in the second scene, Schumann uh, uh, feel, uh, feels uh, unconscious, and uh, then he, he uh, four spirits come and sing to him. He is yeah, unconscious. They sing with this melody, and the three trombones, which is also very symbolic of Schumann, uh, uh, the poison of your lies has to go through all your arteries and through your whole body. And this is the life of Schumann. Yeah, the sin, what he committed, the very bad conscience he had. an opportunistic uh, action. And Ernestine von Fricken uh, died very early and she had depression. And for her it was a fantastic uh, blow. Um, and uh, Probably uh, it's too much when I, when I mention now all the quotations we, we once played this movement. It's a very long movement and sort of uh, yeah, nearly like uh, much more than a romance, more like the fantasy of piano, a very big, big fantasy. And uh, play probably the end sound of a uh, conduct in the piano. Mm -hmm. You have this, uh, it's sort of like a bass drum and tam tam sound when you go with the flat hand on the lower oh. strings. And she ends it with the flat hand, yeah. Yeah, just the last sound. Oh, just this. Yeah, but really, boom. Nothing else, yeah. Yeah. And now you go on, next movement. It's the same and loud and
Don't get faster than the piano. I will say, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's all. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. There's a little problem in balance. It's the bottom of 21, especially. And also, bottom of 20. The piano should, should yeah, and take a little bit less piano, uh, pedal also, but it's not there. Very good. Uh, overwhelming the piano, yeah. And then uh, you have this Manfred choral, but you have also the bass in the 18 in the first line from the D, A, and this has to come out like a cantus firmus. The theme in 18, first line from the, from the bottom D. Play once this third line of a bass. I think it's page eight. <coughs> I think we have other. Ah, uh, yeah, so no, no, no. yeah, but anyway, play this. Thank you. 
and then all the all the uh, not stop dot nodes shouldn't be so short. Anything is too short. Also, the stuck up. Yeah, I'm very allergic to this very so, uh, short stuck up. It doesn't exist in this in old music. And uh, in the beginning, also when you could really uh, use also here the, the harmonics. Yeah. 
Mathematics is a free number, yeah. and unknown number. I can choose, and I have chosen how the the C sharp for it. It's like you have the, note, the notes of F, N, S, F, N, like in bird songs, and you just play like in the first piece this harmonic 
distant, not as busy, okay, but very beautiful and something. Okay. And when I mentioned the trombones, this is also very symbolic for, for Schumann in the, for instance, the oratory of pilgrimage of the rose. The scene in the cemetery has three trombones in E flat. Then the fourth movement of the third symphony, yeah, in a ceremony character, and yeah, in ceremony, has three trombones in E flat. This has trombones in E flat and Manfred. And he has written already, he knew that this brother was deadly ill, and then he has written in Vienna the Nachtstück, and he called it Leichenzug, the first title. And then he went back to Zwickau, and he spent night in Prague, and then he has written later, at three o'clock in the morning, I woke up and I heard the sound of three trombones. And exactly at three o'clock in the morning, this brother died. It's like this trombone is always connected to the death idea. Also, at the end of the second movement of the spring symphony, suddenly the three trombones play. But a few little music after quite a nice evening song. Or the muted horn that he uses even in the cello concerto or in, in the opera Genoveva. It's, it's always a sign of evil, of sin, of lying. It's connected with all the figures who present with this in, in Genoveva, and always with this horn, and also the cello. We will talk about the general concept of it. Probably you, you just play. Yeah, we go along. You play, you play the piece tonight anyway. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, let's do just the very last uh, line when you have the, the last chord in the piano and then the harmonics and the cello also. Both just disappear to the top harmonics, yeah. You can also exchange, you can, you have to have those sounds, but you can take another B flat without it. Yeah, you have to arrange it. Yeah. To see where you get the notes. Let's do this end, and then comes a sort of perpetuum mobile, and this is again uh, uh, Schumann very often and he writes a rush. Oh, <laughs> 
Friedmann hat erst vor ein paar Wochen ein Heft Cellostücke von Schumann verbrannt, da sie fürchtete, sie würden nach ihrem Tod herausgegeben werden. Mir hat das sehr imponiert. Und das ist quoted, you can see here the sketches in those it's an how I transcribe. In this page, you see, I am in for myself, I have written the, the decoration, the decoration of the text. Yeah. You can also see that I foyer Flammen, Asche, Glut, Aschenklamm, Tonaschen, etc. And even Brahms is transcribed in Brand. Of the piano playing with the 
we have a ton of tri triangle between two strings. Yeah, between two two strings, and when you when you uh, move the base of the pack, you get yeah all this, and then the end now. Uh, at the end, after really a completely chaotic, uh, uh, very dramatic uh, gesture, suddenly the music turns into piano, and then the cello plays very strange thing. Can you play only the upper, just the harmonics of the? You mean the from D, yeah, from D to the D flat. Yeah, without double stops, right? Yeah, probably this is 
Yeah, but you should uh, you should end it at the at the beginning of the. Book. It has to be hard. Yeah, yeah, this is not hard. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Just to you should touch the the same point. Yeah. It's very important to, to look around the day what you get for it. Or a triangle stick would be the other. <laughs> yeah, you never should. Not touch anything about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. do it with a bow, but it's hard to yes. <laughs> Okay. Now let's play this rasches Flügel Shall we do the end of the no, now we can uh, just uh, start. Uh, and at the end, still, uh, I forgot, there is like a sort of a grimace, very strange music. The piano play, plays notes with. the cello does the same. Yeah. Okay. And the piece is rhythmically extremely uh, complex, mm -hmm. but it has no bar lines. And uh, the players have to agree on coordination notes where they find each other. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm not sure if I will be able to follow now. No, 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 just play. <laughs> they have some copies also.
du lavede det teater, hvor jeg gerne vil tage det. Espressivo del piano. Crescendo del crescendo. I'm not too slow with the piano. He'll cry loud the piano when he stops. Yeah. I shall be only sound, no beating like that. I'm curious. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do something. That's because when I'm here, it's no problem. Yeah, then do it there. But the whole passage from the other is not good. Yeah. You have enough notes here. But you have to have another uh, thing. Let me look at it. Yeah. Let, let's play it in your B flat there. Uh, and then you stand up. No, no, no. no.
From fantasy pieces of the uh, 73 Russians with Freud. And you have the fire and ashes and rush. Everything is in it. This is quotation. And the Rurg Engel der Gegenwart is also in one of his, yeah, with 18 years uh, in one of his poems. And this is really a sort of fantasy piece. It's the most romantic piece of the all. Yeah. I don't think we have to explain a lot. Just, uh, <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, the last line there, yeah. those eights, no, they're much too fast in young. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. the piano fait que des cloches répétées. They will swallow and they repeat. Can you do the last three bars of the Thank you. 
Think that the cross should be a little bit louder, press with the finger. That is a very sad sound. Yeah, at least this, yeah. And also your notes should be bread, yeah, and then eat. But it's always in two, two notes, the E flat doesn't go away. The E natural doesn't go away when the E flat comes. Oh, yeah, the two strings. Yeah. And that 
the end, the piano plays again. Ende, 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 Wait a little bit longer. Yep. the last quintuple uh, java Good. 
the cello you play really a legato melody but without any expression. Yeah. Yeah, let's when you put the 
alphabet, and you have a 24 letters and only seven months. Yeah? <laughs> It's like in old music, exactly the same yeah, in Bach yeah. or in Zelenka. You have to make this thing. But also the E, which is then E flat, that's a free note. Yeah, here it's a free note, but it's okay. sometimes it's also the S. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the E and the E. I like a sort of cis, C, it's. It's the D flat. Yeah. I've written it with D flat. Yeah. Here I've written it with C sharp for the cello. Yeah. Okay. No, because the harmony is very. I was wondering because the harmony is so complicated. In a way, it sounds very coherent. How do you? Yeah, because so I use the same. Yeah. yeah. So it's a little bit in leader on the volte. You have. The first and second, they, they are nearly sort of a 9 ish yeah. mm -hmm. but it's only because of the, the alphabet, mm -hmm. because the A and the E are very often, very usual, and other letters don't appear so often. But the, yeah, on, on this uh, list here, you can see a little bit how it's made. And I also sometimes I have different alphabets, I change it with yeah, 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 you can. Yeah, you can. It's like in uh, yeah. communication, for the yeah. information. Yeah. Yeah. Naturally, I choose things which make music yeah, yeah. sense. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. 